Hey guys, my name is Steve and welcome to AEAC Vlog. If you're new around here, that's cool. This is actually a sister channel to my primary YouTube channel, the Oregon Exploration and Advancement channel, also known as AEAC Home. Over there, you will get full in-depth product reviews as well as around the world event coverage pertaining to everything air gun. But this here channel is my opportunity to get in front of y'all a little bit more, slow things down a little bit, and bring you in on some learning, discovery, and approach as I receive these products and make my way towards a full review of them over on AEAC Home. Now this here is the Umrex Gauntlet and it came to me by way of Utah Air Guns. Now back in 2017 when this first came to be, it quite literally changed the course of our industry forever because it brought us our very first $300 regulated pre-charged pneumatic air gun. Now fast forward 2019 and we get a new one. This is the 25 cal. The performance is there as it was back in 2017 with the 177 and 22. It's still got a little bit of edge to it, which is cool. Hey, for 300 bucks, who's complaining? At the end of the day, it gets you to the dance and that's really all that matters. So let me get you through it. I'll tell you what I've learned about it and then we'll have a little bit of fun. Now the gun itself is about 46 and a quarter inches long. It weighs in at 8.3 pounds, naked, without a scope, no air in the bottle, no magazine, none of that stuff. At a scope, mounts a cylinder filled with air and a magazine full of lead, and it brings it up to about 10.4 pounds. So that's about what you can expect it to be in the field when you're actually using it. The stock itself is made of a polymer. It's a pretty, um, you know, it's... It's kind of a hobby grade material. It's not what you're gonna see on a multi thousand dollar air gun, but it totally gets the job done. It's tough and rugged. Don't expect perfection. Alignment, you know, on things like this isn't exactly perfect, but again, hey, at the end of the day, who's complaining for the price? Now it is a side bolt cocking. I'll demonstrate it for you. What you're gonna to wanna to do when you cock this rifle is try to avoid grabbing it out here on the end because it is a rather heavy cock and it's a little bit stiff and jittery as you go as well. I'll shut up here so you can kind of watch it in action. Okay, now I'm gonna do that kind of in fast motion so you can see what it looks like in real time. Okay, you still have those little stops along the way, just something to be aware of, not a big deal, but it is what it is and you need to be aware, so there it is. Now the trigger is a single stage trigger. It is also quite adjustable. I'm gonna show you how it comes right out of the box. So you saw there's several stops along the way, not the most refined thing in the world, but the good news is that the owner's manual takes you through how to adjust it. And quite frankly, it's quite easy to make it a lot better. In fact, you probably wanna head on over to Air Gun Depot's YouTube channel and check out Travis's video on how to adjust the trigger for this rifle it's quite good and it'll tell you everything you need to know about that and uh and then some now the bottle itself is actually by ninja the whole gun itself is made in china so this was a pretty smart collaboration between umarex and ninja to bring you this at this price point and it's the bottle itself that is regulated now it's 13 cubic inches or 213 CCs, it is removable. In fact, I think uh, Joe Broncato with airtanksforsale.com has larger bottles if you want to extend your shot count and it's really quite easy to get to. Now, and I'll explain that in just a second. Now, there's some accessories that come with the gun that you need to be aware of. Of course, it does include an eight round magazine. It includes a single shot tray and it includes a multi-tool which is gonna be used for two things, okay? One, that multi-tool is going to be used to unscrew this sling stud. By unscrewing it, then you can remove this plastic shroud, then you can unscrew the, uh, the bottle. That multi-tool is also going to be used to tighten and loosen this sling stud, which locks in the adjustable cheek piece, which is adjustable very simply by rotating this dial. And this is probably one of my favorite things about this gun, and I'll do it here quietly for you. So you can see how nice and refined that is. 
but um, really something very convenient to have in the field. I think every air gun should have one just like this. That big dial is awesome. Even when it's extended, it really doesn't move around too much. So me personally, I'm never really gonna probably tighten this any more than where it is. But if you did wanna lock that in permanent, you can use your multi-tool to, uh, to go ahead and do that. Now the gun can also be degassed, all right? Now if I turn this around, you're going to see a little keyhole right there, all right? Now we can take our multi-tool and we can degas this rifle. And the only time we're really gonna ever need to be able to do that is if we wanna change this bottle to either replace the seal at the end of it or go larger or maybe just have a spare or what have you, but the thing to remember here is that when you degas this gun, it actually just holds the valve open, which pushes air through the barrel and out the end, so if there's a pellet in here, it will fire. So make sure that there's uh, no pellet in the gun before you do this, but put it on safe, and we'll circle back to that, and I'll demonstrate for you real quick how this is done. So you just insert the multi-tool into the keyhole, No, nope, gotta figure out which way to turn it. I'm backwards and upside down, so please forgive me. And then you just slowly turn it. And you can hear the air come out the end. Now if I had kept it in that turn position, it would have completely drained this entire bottle right out the end of the gun. Once you're done draining the bottle, then you wanna cock the rifle and shoot it to make sure that there's no air left in, uh, inside the mechanism, all right? Now the safety is a manual safety. All right, so that is in the fire position. That is in the safe position and to disengage the safety, very simply just, um, just flip it forward. Also there's a rubber butt pad on the gun and the scope rail on top is 11 millimeter, all right? So speaking of scopes, Umarex USA has its own line of scopes and they're called Axion. Now they sent this one to me because, not to get too much off topic here, but the gauntlet with Utah Air Guns is gonna be this month's review discuss win. If you're unfamiliar with that, that's where the industry sends AEAC and the Air Gun Nation Forum product. We review it for you, then we send you all over to Air Gun Nation Forum where you can have a proper discussion on the product and enjoy in a very simple giveaway, which is literally as easily as being a member over there picking a number, you're entered in the giveaway, and then whoever wins, wins, and we do these every, th every single month. So thank you, Umarex, for sending along this Axion, because that, along with this gun, is going to the winner. But this is a scope that's in about the $125 price point. It's a four to 16 by 44, and I had a peek through it yesterday that was reading the literature on it, and it says that it comes with a multi-coated lens. I was actually kind of surprised at the clarity and the brightness that you get for 125 bucks. And everything moves, moves nice and smooth. It's an adjustable objective here on the side. The magnification here is on the back. Everything's nice and slick. The turrets are that style. The clicks seem just fine. So again, for 125 bucks, this may be all you need. The only challenge is that it's a duplex radical scope and I'm gonna be pushing this gun out to 50 and 100 yards because I'm confident it's gonna be capable at those distances and you just can't use a duplex radical scope you know, for that kind of uh, duty, all right? Enter the Optison EVX 10, just a 10X. Yeah, they call it 10X by 44i. Optison Optics is also including a scope that's going to be in that review discuss win and given to the winner. And um, this is about the $340 price point. It's a big step up. It's a 30 millimeter tube, um, super bright, clear glass. It's got the mill dots on the objective and all this other good stuff. We'll drill down more on that when I get to the full review, hopefully next week or this weekend. But um, absolutely a stellar scope. And at 10X is really all you need for this gun, out to 15 yards, out to 100. As you guys well know, I do all of my reviews at 10X, out at 50 and 100 yards. So this was a perfect right at home for me. And Sports Match Rings UK, as long as I'm sounding like an infomercial, is including a set of their Sports Match uh, scope mounts, which are absolutely excellent. 
Okay, so what have I learned about the gun so far? Well, Umarex is claiming 890 feet per second with a lead pellet, and it absolutely hits that mark. In fact, that was my average with a 25.39 grain pellet across the entire shot chart, which brought it in right at about 44 foot-pounds of energy, okay? So the power is absolutely there for a 25. All right, now here's the really fantastical part, all right? Now the gun is regulated by Ninja, but this regulator is, let me just say it, holy shit spot on good, and is performing right there with multi-thousand dollar air rifles. Now the overall efficiency and things like that isn't there because the bottle's smaller and it's a less expensive gun and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, you're experiencing an extreme spread over the 25 regulated shots that this gun gets at about eight feet per second and a standard deviation of just 1.8 feet per second. What that means is that the shot to shot consistency is going to be very convenient for 50 and 100 yard shooting and you should not experience those points of impact with varying velocity. And I have to say, Umrex, I was quite blown away at the numbers you were putting up um, with this, this system. It's, it's more dialed in than I remember the 22 that I had, um, I think it was January of last year when I reviewed that one. So bravo to uh, you guys there. But like I said, you get 25 good shots on that regulator with an average of 44 foot pounds a piece. Now the barrel, like the rest of the gun, comes out of China and I think that we've kind of got it in our heads that that's a bad thing but I'm seeing more and more good product out of China. Case in point, SBA, Diana, Stormrider, Outlaw, Skyhawk, this kind of thing and the gauntlet in these barrels are proving to be very good. To give you an example, that's eight shots at 25 yards working through that trigger as is. That's another eight at 25. That's another eight at 25, why eight? Because that's the size of, uh, of the magazine, but we'll come back to that in just a second. Now the gun itself is actually pretty loud. Why? Because they're trying to push 44 foot-pounds through a baffled shroud that's just 26 inches long and is about 0.85 inches in, uh, in diameter, and there's quite frankly not enough volume here to contain all of that energy, so it's got a pretty good bark to it. Now, the good news is, is that the aftermarket is here to rescue you, and companies like Ramus Technology and um, their Trident, or Air Guns of Arizona slash Daystate and their Zero DB, or Don EFL and their Sumo, these are all moderators that have done a very good job of quieting this gun and if you want to know more about that just hit me up on Facebook and Instagram as I did kind of a full review summary and post there about all that okay now you will not be able to add this type of moderator to the factory shroud on your gauntlet you're gonna need an aftermarket shroud this one is by Donnie FL it costs about 60 bucks and the cool thing is that it replaces your OEM shroud. And as you can see, it's shorter, and then it has what you want on the end, the one half inch UNF thread, so that you can add any of these moderators. Speaking of price point, you're about 150 bucks with the Sumo, you're about 180 bucks with the Zero DB, and you're about 200 bucks with the Trident, um, this little piece on the end that disperses air and adds weight to, to combat muzzle flip. Might be a little more, so you'll have to, you know, just check all that out. Don't, uh, don't, uh, don't quote me on that. But long story short, there they all performed. I, I did some sound testing, kind of, you know, right here, you know, next to the gun, and then 20 yards downrange, and they were all pretty much equal once you got 20 yards downrange. But again, we'll drill down on that some more in the full review, or you can check me out on Facebook and Instagram. Hooked on Air is your keyword search for both of those pages if you want to join me in the uh, the day to day. All right. So what else do I want to talk about? Let's do this. Let's clean the barrel on this bad boy. So cleaning the barrel on a gauntlet is really easy. You just unscrew the shroud. You slide it off. It's that easy. There's going to be a couple pieces in here. Don't worry about losing them. That's your baffle on the inside. This is your spring to kind of keep everything lined up. All right. This guy on the end, this just slides off and 
All it does is kind of keep the shroud centered in this new barrel band. I don't know if the 177 and 22 have this now, uh, or if this was just an upgrade for the .25, but it's here now and it wasn't there before. So it is what it is. I don't know if it's good or bad, but just something to, uh, to be aware of. All right, now when you clean this gun, you want to cock it. You want to put the safety on. I'm going to double check if that's working right, and it is. Now cleaning guns is a million different ways to do this. I really like the patchworm. The reason I like the patchworm is because they come with these little caliber specific collars. So when I slip the patch over here, um, it does a really nice job of kind of fanning that patch or pushing it on the outside barrel of, or, or the outside walls of the barrel. So it tends to really scrub it, scrub it very clean. I like to use Ballastol as my cleaner lubricant because there's nothing that this can hurt anywhere on the gun. Wood, plastic, metal, seals, it doesn't matter, there's just nothing that this is gonna hurt and it's also a very good cleaner. It's all I use, it's all I've ever used. So if you like the accuracy that you see on, on AEAC, this is how I clean my barrels every time I, I, uh, I go to work. But now Patchworm comes with these little um, plugs that you can kind of pull through. It also comes with a one and a quarter inch patch or smaller. Um, these both work very well. Um, you can kind of fine tune these collars by going to a, uh, a larger patch. In other words, you can kind of tighten the tolerance. And I always like to try to go as large as I can because it just scrubs the barrel better. All right, this is the one and a half inch and this is the one and three quarter inch. What I typically like to do is start with the smallest patch, the ones that Patchworm comes from, comes with the one and a quarters because when the barrels dry, it can be hard to pull a patch through and that's the best way to kind of lubricate it as, uh, as you get going. And while I'm kind of doing this, I'm going to talk about accuracy a little bit. So if you've been following me on Facebook and Instagram, you'll know that I called pretty much every 25 cal pellet that I could get my hands on and uh, at 25 yards. And I came away with some real winners and frankly, some real surprises. This gun performed very well at 25 with the Predator International Polymag, which I said also fits in the magazine. It performed very well with the um, 25.39 grain JSB and Air Arms. There we go. Performed very well with, the, with, the, with those two. It did very well, believe it or not, with the MK, um, with the Mark II JSB, the 34 grain. By the way, this gun is pushing that 34 grain pellet to right about 800 feet per second. So that's 48 foot pounds on average, guys. Okay, so now that I've got that barrel kind of lubed up, I'm gonna turn this patch inside out, do it one more time. And these are gonna come out pretty dirty because this is what it looks like after my pellet culling session, which is I just run card after card after card of pellets through here. The barrels typically get loaded up with garbage. And, um, and that's what these cleaning patches look like when you when you pull them through. So now that I got that small guy through, I'll typically go up to a, um, a one and a half and see how that one pulls through because that's going to give me a little bit better scrub. Okay. Now also with these uh, these pellets, another one that performed really really well for me was the um, was the uh, Benjamin Dome at 25 yards. Those suckers were pretty much pellet. Pellet on pellet. And again, you know, when you're looking at these groups, you got to bear in mind that, you know, we're working through a trigger here that's pretty tough out of the box. It's fine for hunting and whatever, but if you're trying to poke a .25 size hole eight times in a row downrange at 25 yards, it's, it's going to fight you and it's going to take some work. All right, so that uh, one and a half went through very nicely. So let me just re, re uh, turn that around here. Use the clean side. And this, guys, is how I clean my air guns. And I'll do this until these patches come out clean. Now, you can reverse them oiled versus dry, oiled versus dry, oiled versus dry, and that's fine. And here's a, now we're going to move up to the one and three quarter. Again, you don't want to go just right to the one and three quarter, at least I don't, because I found that oftentimes it won't pull it through. But then if you pull the other ones through first and get things nice and lubed up in there, 
it will pull these big patches through and you'll get a nice good scrub scrub on it there you go came through nice and you can see they're getting cleaner and cleaner as we go all right now to recap a little bit I know I've kind of thrown a lot at you quick because I'm trying to remember so much and I got to try to cram it into under 30 minutes so you guys don't go to sleep on me. But for just $300, guys, you've got a gun here that's getting you to the dance in a big way. It's regulated, 25 shots, extreme spread of eight, which is right on par with, with the big boys. It's um, giving you between 44 and 48 foot pounds of energy, depending on if you're using a 25 grain or a uh, 34 grain. And it's pushing those between 890 and 800 feet per second on average. So this baby's got all the snort and then some you'd need to be able to reach out to, uh, to 50 and, uh, and 100 yards. So those are coming out pretty clean. So then what I normally like to do is I'll dry fire the gun, oh, probably at least three times to make sure that if there's any oil that's kind of seeped down into the transfer port, I'm coughing that up now before I start pulling dry patches through so that while I'm testing the gun for accuracy, it's not spewing that residual oil into the barrel and mucking with, uh, mucking with my results. All right, that should be pretty good. Now we'll start running dry patches, uh, dry patches through it. All right, now let me make sure I didn't forget to tell you about any of these pellets that worked so well. Nope, that was all of them, but I put all sorts of mess through it. And that's the other thing, this barrel is, um, you know, it's not what I would call fussy, but it definitely showed its, uh, its favorites. And I got, an, I got a feeling that's gonna get even better for me as, um, as I get that trigger dialed in. And in fact, I'd love to hear your feedback on that because the reality is, when I reviewed the gauntlet, I had a whole slew of you that were angry at me for reviewing the gun for what it was. You know, it's my job to relay the information to you without sugarcoating anything, and the trigger was tough, all right? It was tough then, it's tough now, so I reviewed the gun as such. But what I wanna do in my heart of hearts is do what you all do and take, you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is and, and get that trigger right and then go and review it so that I can give you the best possible groups at 50 and 100, show you what the gun is actually capable of. But, um, you know, I don't want you guys to feel like then I didn't review the product exactly for what it was. So I'd love to hear your feedback in, um, in the comments as to where you guys are all at with, uh, with all that. All right, so I'll just keep pulling these patches through. Then what I normally like to do is I normally like to get out one of these um, buttons. Patchworm calls them buttons. And they come in different calibers. These are 25 caliber buttons. And I'll take a large patch. And I'll put it on in that sequence right there. Okay, button first, then patch, then the, uh, the little appropriate size collar that, that opens it up to a, to a 25 cal. Okay, now with these patches, what I'll often like to do, not to patch the button, I'll kind of roll the tip to make a little bit of a point out of it so it doesn't get caught up going through. And what you'll find that these buttons do is they do a really nice job of kind of scrubbing the walls out past the, um, the rifling. And this is gonna be pretty tight as I pull it through. And that's what you want. You want that noise, you know you're getting it pretty squeaky clean and if you look, at that button, you'll see the rifling marks on there. And that's what you want. You want to get all that oil out before you get started. And I found it typically takes, on most air guns, between 30 and 50 shots to get kind of re-seasoned. Every once in a while, you'll get that weird air gun that wants like 300 shots before it starts giving you pellet on pellet at 50, but most of them are, you know, not, not, uh, not as much. So I'm gonna do one more of those and a couple more dry patches here. And um, I think that that's pretty much going to be it, guys, for today. I don't want to give you the whole song and dance, otherwise you're not going to want to watch my full review next week. But 
I'm going to get a little bit heavy on you here for a minute, so bear with me. Um, and I'm actually going to ask for your help with something. So I like to look at our air gun industry. Oops, I put that on backwards. I like to look at our air gun industry as kind of a close knit family, you know, or, or a community. We, we tend to look out for one another. Um, you know, we're kind of all in this together and that we want air guns to be around for a long time. And, and um, we want to be able to enjoy them for years to come. And so in that way, you know, we're all kind of you know, one big fraternity or sorority, if you will. And a member of our community is actually um, in a great deal of pain today and, and as a family is really hurting. I don't know if you've ever caught any of my SHOT Show coverage of uh, Hot Sign USA, but Cecil is, Cecil Bays is the operations manager for Hot Sign USA and he's the guy, he's the guy who does all of um, my interviews at SHOT Show and takes me through the product. Well, a couple of weeks back, um, his wife and son were in a, in a car accident and his wife was, um, was busted up pretty bad and he lost his son, all right? So um, obviously um, they're dealing with a great deal of pain in that family the um, financial strain that's probably on them right now between covering a funeral, um, between Mrs. Bays being out of work and Cecil not working but focusing on his family is probably insurmountable. So, you know, I'm not really one to ask for charity, but I'm letting you guys know that um, I'm going to be sending a sizable amount of money that way to that family. And if you head over to Air Gun Nation Forum, um, and I'll leave you a link in the description of this video so you know how to get there. You can set, they've got a collection started. You can, hey, if you want to pay your 8% to GoFundMe, you can, but I don't recommend that. I recommend just sending a check to Hot Sun USA. They will get it to Cecil and his family. And the way I figured, figured is there's about 6,000 of you following me here on the vlog, and if each one of us gives five or 10 bucks, well, you guys do the math. And that would put the Bayes family in a, um, in, in, a, in a much better position than, uh, than they are today. But, um, you know, like I said, we need to be there for one another. And, and I, um, I don't ask a lot of you guys, but I'm asking of you now. If you can help, this is a, um, this is a family that, uh, that definitely is in need right now. And, and it would be nice to see us all get behind them and, and do a do our part. So um, with that, I think I'm going to wrap this up. In closing, um, I'm going to tell you that if you're going to order this gun, which you should, it's great in so many ways and it's priced right, um, just go ahead and get yourself a shroud kit and a moderator right out of the hole because it barks pretty good. Um, it's, it's nothing like a 22 or anything, but if you're going to use it, and not being wanting to scare Corey and these other kinds of things, you know, it, it could use an upgrade there, but otherwise it's, um, where's my spring? Otherwise it's, uh, you know, it could just use the help. Let's just put it that way. And it's, it's not a whole, uh, it's not a whole lot, lot of money. So with that, I will say thank you wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I appreciate you tuning in and spending almost 30 minutes with me now. So I'm going to say goodbye and I hope to catch you again. If weather permitting, we have 25 mile an hour winds today and yesterday, tomorrow, they're probably going to come back down to 10, 12, which to me is still too high to try to evaluate an air gun out to hundred yards. So I'm probably going to film Saturday and Sunday and typically about three days after that, I'll have a full review out there for you. So um, keep an eye here, keep an eye to AEAC Home, keep an eye to Air Gun Nation. You'll know when that launches so that you can partake in the discussion and the giveaway as well as enjoy the view, the review, and uh, thanks. See you guys soon.